Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to use Stable Diffusion to transform ugly 3D people into amazing realistic characters. Now, you might be wondering, why not use real people in the renderings? Well, sometimes 3D models offer more flexibility in terms of pose and lighting, but they can also look a bit plasticky. This is where Stable Diffusion comes in. This powerful AI tool can take your existing 3D renders and add a layer of photorealism. So how we do this? First things first, you will need a stable diffusion set up on your computer. If you don't have it installed yet, check out my tutorial in this link. Now, stable diffusion comes with some great built-in models, but let's expand this. We're going to download a new model called Cyber Realistic from Civit AI. It's really good at creating realistic people, which is exactly what we need. Head over to Civit AI's website, find the Cyber Realistic model and click on the V4.1 back to basics, and then the download button. Once you have it, go to the AI folder, then go to the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, open the models, and then open the Stable Diffusion folder. This is the folder where we're going to add the models we want to use with the Stable Diffusion. So cut the Cyber Realistic we just downloaded and paste it in this folder. Once you're good to go, run a Stable Diffusion by going to the AI folder we created in the previous tutorials. At the top of the screen, you can find the Stable Diffusion checkpoint. Change these for the Cyber Realistic we just installed. If you don't see it, click on the Refresh button. Head to the Image to Image tab and then select InPaint. This is where the magic happens. Here, you can drag and drop the 3D render you want to enhance. But this option also allows you to paint in a specific area, like the face. So let's do that and use the brush to paint over the face and neck of one of the characters. If you have multiple 3D people, it's better to do each one separately for better results. Once you have done this, scroll down a bit and change the in-paint area to only mask. We're also going to adjust a few parameters. We're going to start with the denoising strength. Think about this as how the algorithm is going to affect the image. At zero, nothing will change and at one, we will get an unrelated image. We need to find the perfect balance, so let's try 0.4 for now. Then, let's change the batch size. This option lets you generate multiple images at once. Set this to a high number, like four or five, to get a bunch of variations in one go. And the last setting we're going to change is the sampling steps. This will improve the generated image, but the higher the number, the more time it's going to take to finish. So let's start with 40. Now, the fun part, crafting the prompt. This is basically a set of instructions for a stable diffusion, telling it what kind of transformation we want. We want to focus on making the person look realistic. So here is an example prompt you can use for this person. Asian, woman, face, pretty, brunette, for a real, and soft smile. You can adjust these based on your specific needs. Maybe your character needs a softer lighting or a specific hairstyle. The more details you provide, the better the results will be. We also want to add some negative prompts. Think of the negative prompts as a way of telling a stable diffusion what you don't want to see. For example, if you're trying to create a photorealistic portrait but keep getting cartoon-like results, you could add cartoon style or animation to your negative prompt. In this case, we're also going to include long neck and ugly. Now, with the prompt set and your in-painting area defined, click the Generate button. A stable Diffusion will create image variations based on your instructions. If you don't like any of the images, adjust your prompt and the parameters we discuss. Remember, all this is about experimentation and trying different settings. After the stable Diffusion finishes generating the images, we can see four different options, each with some variations. If you don't like any of these options, Try a different prompt, parameter, or even a different sampling method. After you're happy with the first character, in the in-paint area, click the Erase button to remove the mask. Then, paint on the face of the next character. You may need to also adjust the prompt depending on the character features. After clicking the Generate button again, you're going to get four additional images. Once you're happy with the results of all your 3D models, Click on this button to open the folder with all the generated images. Then bring both your original 3D render and your new AI-generated face into Photoshop 
as separate layers. Make sure your face image is the top layer. Add a layer mask to your AI face layer. This would let us select, hide, and reveal different parts of the face and hair so we can do a seamless blending. You can also use a soft brush on the layer mask and paint with black or white to reveal different areas of the face. As the AI face uses the same lighting and settings as the original render, we usually don't need to do any additional adjustments, but sometimes you may need to enhance the color or contrast of the image. There you have it. With the stable diffusion and a little creative prompting, you can take your 3D renders to the next level of realism. Remember, the AI world is all about exploration and learning. Don't be afraid to experiment with different prompts, models, and settings. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.